let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. We give you honor and we give you glory that you've seen fit to establish your church and that we are included in it and that you have promised us where there are two or three of us gathered together in your name. In other words, under your authority that you are in our midst. And the Lord, the way we keep that authority, that we gather in it, is to proclaim your word, cover to cover, truthfully, and without comment, but your word. And Lord, that we come in a spirit of unity to worship you and praise your holy name, seeking not for ourselves, but only for you. God, we desire the leadership of the Holy Spirit today that we can truly grow in you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Um, the first song we're going to sing uh, this morning, uh, well, while the melody might not be at the top of a lot of believers' lists, the words have to be. Um, because this song speaks of the plan of salvation, the feebleness of man, uh, and the strength and the mercy of God. Um, it was uh, penned by Reverend William Newell in 1895, and he was serving as assistant superintendent of the Moody Bible Institute of Chicago when the words for this hymn came to him. Uh, on his way to teach a class at the Bible Institute. And he slipped into an empty classroom and he wrote this song uh, on the back of an envelope. Uh, the song took only minutes to write, but yet it reflects the depths of Bible doctrine. And um, I was listening to it um, not too long, I think it's been just in this last week or so, and it's a beautiful, beautiful old hymn. And the, all of the hymns that we're going to be singing today have one thing in common. They were all written before 1900. So there is nothing new uh, in, these song, in these songs. But oh, what a joy it is to sing them. Years I spent in vanity and pride Caring not, my Lord was crucified. Knowing not it was for me, he died on Calvary. Oh, mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied. To me, oh, there my burden so found liberty at Calvary. By God's word at last my sin I learn. Then I trembled at the law I'd spurned. Till my guilty soul imploring turned to Calvary. Oh, mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty. At Calvary, now I've given to Jesus everything, and now I gladly own him as my king. Yeah. Now my raptured soul can only sing of Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. Oh, the love that drew 
salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. And pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. One more time on the course. Oh, mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. Hallelujah there my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Thank you, yes. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In um, 1896, Henry uh, J. Zelly and H.L. Gilmore uh, wrote uh, this following song. Both men were ministers in the Methodist Episcopal Church, a far different church than the Methodist Church of today, the United Methodist Church. Uh, their doctrine was of holiness at that time, and separation. Verses 1 and 3 of this song speak of the horrible state of sin and the weight that was uh, dragging each of us down and the great displeasure of God Almighty as He looks upon sin original and on our personal transgressions. Beautiful song. My heart was distressed Jehovah's dread frown and lo in the pit where my sins dragged me down oh I cried to the Lord from the deep miry clay who tenderly brought me out to golden day oh he brought me out of the miry clay he set my feet on the rock to stay. He puts a song in my soul today, a song of praise, hallelujah. He placed me upon the strong rock by his side. My steps were established and here I'll abide. Oh, no danger of falling while here I remain, but stand by His grace until the crown I gain. Oh, He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. And he puts a song in my soul today. It's a song of praise. Hallelujah. I'll tell of the pit with its gloom and despair. I'll praise the dear Father who answered my prayer. I'll sing my new song, the glad story of love, then join in the chorus with the saints above. Oh, he brought me out of the miry clay, and he set my feet on the rock to stay. He puts a song in my Heart today, a song of praise, hallelujah. Oh, that song excites me. He brought me out of the miry clay. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I remember a dear brother who led uh, song service in Iowa. I don't even remember how old I was. I must have been uh, 11 or 12. And for the really for the first time, I heard it, and I said, "Oh, I was stuck in the mire. That was me. 
the miry clay that just sucks at your weight and you just sink deeper and deeper. It's worse than quicksand. Thank you, Jesus. We're set free. Glory to his name. Uh, speaking of that, uh, this hymn was written by Reverend Elisha Hoffman, 1878. Hoffman was a circuit preacher for the Evangelical Association when he wrote uh, this beautiful song, Glory to His Name. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, all oh, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to His name, oh glory to His name, glory to His name, oh there to my heart was the blood applied, glory to His name. You know, I am so wondrously saved from sin, and Jesus so sweetly abides within. Oh, there at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to My heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. O oh, precious fountain that saves from sin, I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to His name, oh glory to His name, oh there to my heart was the blood applied, glory to His name, I've come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. Oh, glory to his name. Oh, glory to his name. Oh, there to my heart was the blood of light. Glory to His name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Amen. God. Love that song. Amen. Amen. We've got one more hymn. Amen. Uh, this is the elder of the songs that we're singing today. Um, it is uh, was written in 1850, maybe 1851, when it saw its publishing by Reverend Aaron R. Wolf. Uh, he was a minister with the Presbyterian Church, again, a, com a completely different church uh, by and large in 1850 than it is now. Um, I, I believe this hymn is not only beautiful, but it's a song of doctrine. Uh, the words are beautiful, the tune is beautiful. Complete in thee, no work of mine May take, dear Lord, the place of thine Thy blood hath pardoned, bought for me And I am now complete in thee Yea, justified, O oh, blessed thought, and sanctified, salvation wrought. Thy blood hath pardoned, bought for me, and glorified I too shall be. 
Complete in thee, no more shall sin. Thy grace hath conquered reign within. Thy voice shall bid the tempter flee, and I shall stand complete in thee. Yea, justified, O blessed thought, and sanctified salvation wrought. Thy blood hath pardoned, bought for me, and glorified I too shall be. Dear Savior, when before thy bar all tribes and tongues assembled are, among thy chosen will I be. At thy right hand, complete in thee. Yea, justified, O blessed thought, And sanctified salvation wrought. Thy blood hath pardoned, bought for me, And glorified I too shall be. Yea, justified, O blessed thought, and sanctified salvation wrought. Thy blood hath pardoned, bought for me, and glorified I too shall be. I love it. Didn't know it. Didn't Praise know it, but I love God. It. Praise God. Thank you, yeah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Love that old Praise hymn. You, Thank you, Jesus. Praise Thank God. Um, he is, uh, this Lord of ours, is absolutely uh, marvelous. Oh, yeah. He's beyond words. Amen. Amen. No human words can come up with uh, the reality of Christ. None. Often don't cover it. Just, just doesn't make it. The sermons that we preach, no matter what church we're in, no matter how anointed we are, our human words fail to describe His holiness. That's right. We're just weak. We're so weak. We have no idea. We've got no idea, and we pray every time I preach, every time I teach, I pray the Holy Ghost put those coals of fire from the altar in heaven upon my lips because I'm unworthy to speak. Every minister is. None of us are worthy to speak His holy words. It is only the Holy Spirit as we go into the secret chamber or the prophet's chamber as we look back at the at the prophet and they put the bed upon the wall a stool a table and a candle and that was what the prophet needed that's all that he needed some place to study some place to pray to prepare to preach of the holiness of god the sacrifice of holiness is our theme for today and i pray that we do not stop at the obvious circumstances of all which led Jesus to Calvary's tree. Uh, but that we, we're going to look at the genuine conditions of the sacrifice of Christ today. Uh, as we behold His life, His ministry, uh, the punishment, uh, His death, and the resurrection all of that uh, becomes part of the resurrection story uh, of our Savior. I hope that we all delve into the unfathomable gift of God that was bestowed for you and me. I want us to dive down. Uh, and If you've ever been in, a, um, in the ocean and you dive down and you feel the pressure of that water, 
upon you or you have dove into a, a lake. I remember one time I was fishing and the fish broke my reel and I just dove in with pole and all and started pulling at it. Uh, you get the pressure from that water which you have displaced and all of a sudden it begins to cover you. The pressure does. I pray that uh, with all of our might that we let ourselves sink into this offering of our Lord who is the Christ that we cannot even see the surface of the water and that we are hopelessly lost irretrievably submerged in the depths of his holy report yes. oh hallelujah we don't need to be anywhere near the surface we've got to let ourselves go down and drown in the Lord be truly baptized yes. and I was um, rereading through uh, some uh, baptismal scriptures and I was uh, sharing and the first one that strikes me and why we believe that baptism is by immersion is because of what is said of Jesus John baptized him in a lot of movies yes Christian movies they show John simply taking water cupped in his hands and pouring it over the head of Jesus Christ yet the Bible says that he came up out of the water how can you come up out of the water if your head was just wet he was immersed he was in it it represents death praise God I want to say, amen, dead and buried and resurrected. That's what it represents. I want us to read first in Isaiah chapter 53, and we're going to be in verses 1 through 12. Uh, again, that's Isaiah 53. If you have your Bible with you, uh, I encourage you to get it out and read along with me. I might pause at a couple of points and make a couple of comments, but... Uh, Isaiah 53 1 through 12 and the Bible says who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground amen he hath no form no comeliness no hand he's not handsome and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Um, I believe people had the wrong idea of Messiah. They were looking for somebody that would be charismatic. In other words, that would be full of the natural good looks. No such Messiah. He's not a Fabio. Not a Fabio. No. And don't get me wrong, that didn't mean that he wasn't in good shape. Being a carpenter at that time and walking the way he did, he was in excellent shape. He would have been thin and trim, but he would have been muscular. No different than my grandfather. Uh, my grandfather was a muscular man, tight, strong. But he didn't exercise, he just worked. He didn't run, he didn't jog. He didn't walk for exercise. He walked to get to where he was going and he worked. Um, but Jesus was not a comely man. Verse 3, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. And this was the beginning, well, the beginning of his payment for our sins. Mm -hmm. 
This was the beginning, long before, long before the cross, Jesus was already paying the price for you and me. Amen. Because Amen. he had not only to take it to the cross, but he had to live it in life. He had to feel the same temptations, the same pains, the same sicknesses. He had to deal with all of it, the same betrayals, the same hurts, the same family tensions. Yep, amen, indeed. The same family disappointments, the same family stress, the same family responsibilities. The losing of friends, the losing of those that had once been with him, he had to go through. Written in you said? It was written in past tense, like it's already done. Already done. Yes. And it was. Well, we know it was done, and we're going to be talking about that because he's the lamb slain before the foundation of the world, so it was already done. Uh, you say, well, how could it be? Because God purposed it therefore in the mind of God it was done yep. that is how powerful what he did there was no question I remember hearing people say well what if Jesus hadn't went to the cross what do you mean <laughs> he was destined it was planned it was predetermined Amen. it was sanctified it would happen. It could not happen any other way. It was fully orchestrated. No accidents. Nothing happened. That God did not propose and purpose and ordain from heaven before He created this universe. It was already on the table. He had already done it before Adam ever sinned. Yeah, thank you. A lot of people preached that uh, this was done in reaction to Adam's sin. Uh-uh. No. Long ere Adam drew his first breath because God breathed into him. It was there. Verse 5, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Not just physical healing, but spiritual healing. Yeah. It's not limited to either realm. Yeah. Thank God. Uh, yeah, I, was, I was listening to um, Paul Washer here about two weeks ago. And he said, let me tell you what. A lot of people believe that the gifts of the New Testament have ceased. He said, I'm not a cessationist. He said, because I have seen people healed in the missionary field. Mm -hmm. And uh, my wife and I were talking about that. Why is it in this modern day that typically we really see those things in the missionary fields? Because God is revealing His power to people that are unbelievers and have no knowledge of who He is. And so He reveals himself yes he said i have heard strange things about people speaking in other tongues in languages that they've never known or heard and then someone locally interpreting just as they did in the bible praise you lord thank you god. a whole language unlearned let me tell you what god is the same yesterday today and forever amen verse 6 all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned every one to his own way amen and the lord hath laid on him jesus the iniquity of us all he was oppressed and he was afflicted yet he opened not his mouth that's right, amen. He had, every, he had every right to open his mouth. Mm -hmm. He was God, fully God, not part God, fully God, fully man. Amen. He could have opened his mouth 
He said, I can call 10,000 angels. I can call troops of angels to come and take me off the cross, to rescue me now. I can defeat, because he can defeat the world at any moment he wants to. That's right. Any yeah. moment. He has the power to do it. Yeah. But right. he has set the time aside in the future. And yes. here he kept his mouth shut. He has brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. Amen. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? In other words, who is going to speak of him? Praise the Lord. Amen. To testify of him. For he was cut. No one did. All of his disciples fled. But he did. Mama. Mary, John, at the end, Joseph of Arimathea came at the very last, but everybody else vacated. They were scared to death. No one would testify. He was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, Joseph of Arimathea. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. He didn't come at this point. He was not the Lion of Judah. He did not come to overthrow governments. He did not come to overthrow the council. But he came to preach something, well, what they thought was completely new, a gospel. But all oh, this gospel is eternal. This gospel is not new. Yes, amen. It's all eternity old. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Yet, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Preach he hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Amen. He shall see, see of the travail of his soul, and he and shall be satisfied by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. Not all, justify many. For he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, because you say, well, why isn't it everyone? Because not everybody's going to set, is going to accept. Not everyone is going to believe upon him. It says that he's the stone that the builders rejected. If the very builders, if the very rabbis, the very teachers of the world reject him, then the majority will reject him. Amen. Verse 12. Therefore Amen. will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The reason I felt compelled, and I say that compelled, as though the Holy Spirit were pushing me to it, is so that not only us that are gathered here today, but anybody else who listens to this, in the future can contemplate what Christ went through because what he went through was for you and me. Yes. Amen. Amen. He substituted himself for what belonged to us. In other words, it wasn't just that he did it for us, but he took exactly what we deserved. Amen. He was innocent. 
completely innocent, lived a perfect life, made no mistakes, did not wake up cross. And people say, well, was he always nice? He yeah. was always truthful and he was always courteous, but he always told the truth. And that did not always appear to be nice to people. Just like today, when we speak the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, people say, well, you're using hate speech. No, I'm speaking the truth of the Bible. I don't hate anybody. Yeah, amen. I hate no one. Jesus didn't hate anybody, but it didn't keep him from speaking the truth. Ephesians 5, 2 will be in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2. Amen. Ephesians 5 and 2. And God said in this verse, And walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Amen. Yes, amen. Thank you. That's supposed to be our life now. Thank you. We're to offer ourselves as a sweet smelling savor as Christ did. That means we're to pour ourselves out. A drink amen. offering, a meat offering, a bread offering, Jesus. Jesus did all of that. He was the bread of life. He was the Ooh. lamb slain. Yes. He was the blood, the wine, and it was spilled out. He provided all of the elements of the sacrificial system. You say, well, that was mimicking the sacrificial system of the Old Testament. No, that was the sacrificial testament speaking back to the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. He is not patterned after the sacrificial system. The sacrificial system was patterned after Him. Amen. Yeah. Woo! Amen. Although it had not happened yet. Mm -hmm. That is how sure God's Word is to us. Amen. Amen. That's all we need to think about. That is how sure God's Word is to His children. If he has spoken it, it's done. It Amen. will come to pass. Yes. Thank Amen. you, Lord. He says that if two or three gather under his authority, he will be in our midst. The Holy Spirit will be there. Praise yes. you, Lord. We don't have to be dressed our best. We don't have to look great. We can be as ugly as anything in the world, as anybody has ever been. Right, amen. And God will be there in our midst. Thank you. Right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Um, this, <laughs> this good scented offering that was talked about denotes that the sacrifice of Jesus has never abated. I don't believe in the halls of heaven. The fragrance of his death still hangs above the altar in heaven. I propose that the odor of his offering of being slain did not first appear at Golgotha, but in heaven, where he is the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. You could already smell the sacrifice in heaven. You say, well, it hadn't happened left, but the Father could already, just as He did with every sacrifice, He spoke of it at Mount Sinai. A sweet-smelling savor. Yes. That's what the sacrifice is with Him. Yes. And Amen. that is what He looks for. Thank that is what He looks for. And in the sacrificial system, the priests were to have incense. And the incense was designed to represent the sweet-smelling savor of the sacrifice. And if anything else was used, God would not accept it. No. And today, friend, today, if we don't offer Him ourselves as a sacrifice, it's not acceptable. He wants us all. He wants us to lay it all out on the line. Praise yes. God. 
Before Jehovah laid the foundation of the universe, he foreappointed. I'm going to say this. I'm going to get us tired of these four words. Foreappointed. And he foreordained that King Messiah would be the propitiation for our sin. Amen. And that Messiah would redeem his people, paying the price or the ransom for our souls. Thank you, Lord. Already done. Thank you, Jesus. And so when we look at what Christ did, so often we think about what is going on right now, or we think about what was going on when Jesus came to earth. Fully man, fully God, yet we seldom think about what transpired in all eternity past. Because we have no concept of when this was planned. We know that it was before the foundation of the world, before what he made. But we don't know when. So he's the beginning, he's we, the beginning, and he's the end. So it was done at some point before he created anything. And we made man in our image. You know, here's what... Here's what astounds me. This is what astounds me. That we were already on his mind. I, you know, I love that song, When He Was on the Cross, I Was on His Mind. But no, not just then. Oh, we were. But yeah. it was long before that. Mm -hmm. Amen. It was long before that. Thank God. Mark 10.45. We're going to be in Mark 10.45. Thank you, Jesus. My beautiful wife was just saying that, that the Lord said, it's we. We, make, we will make man in our image. The first reference to the Holy Trinity right there in Genesis. Uh, we get a glimpse of the divine trinity. Mark, Everybody's never sure about the trinity. All they have to read is chapter 1. Genesis. Amen. Let's go to Mark 10, 45. Again, that's Mark chapter 10, verse 45. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Um, thank you, God. Thank you. you know, I was thinking about that. Several times in Scripture, it mentions that Jesus looked for a way to get away from the crowd. His body was physically tired. And yep. I remember particularly where he's going across the Sea of Galilee and the people get into the boats. They start coming around the end of the sea. They're walking. They're coming in boats. He gets to the other side and here they come. And what does he do? He begins to preach again. He begins to minister again. Though his body had to be the, the physical body had to be absolutely drained yes amen. because not only of the anointing upon the physical body the anointing of the the anointing on the the mind but also the strain physically the strain mentally yes Lord. genesis chapter 3 continues the proclamation of the supreme sacrifice of Jesus the Christ Genesis 3:15 Genesis 3:15 and here is the I believe the absolute um, understanding of what God would go through and why he was doing it and we again we see this and it's in Genesis it's after the fall of Adam and Eve but again planned long before that Genesis 3 15 and I will put enmity between thee and the woman 
and between thy seed and her seed. It shall uh, bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel, which is representative of the um, things that Christ would go through as the sacrifice, but he definitely bruised the head of Satan and all of his plans. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Salvation's history did not, thank God, end there. For the entirety of the sacrificial system of the first covenant, I've already made mention of this, spoke of these were just types of sacrifice of the death of Messiah. When the Son, uh, the second person, again of the Holy Trinity, uh, was committed to a lifelong sacrifice, not just on Calvary, but lifelong, uh, right. even unto death. Because every day he lived, he was, he was in sacrifice. He yeah. sacrificed uh, by taking over the position of Joseph. Joseph died. He then became the breadwinner for the family. Uh, he became the one that strengthened his, um, his mother. And he was leading them. And we see that he did exactly what was expected of him. Weekly, he was at the temple. And he was reading scripture, just as we should. You Amen. say, well, I don't have to obey this. I don't have to do that. Well, let me tell you what Jesus did. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Jesus did. Jesus went to the Amen. house Jesus. of God and he read and he taught. It was, but see, Amen. all of this, again, not was not reaction to contemporaneous circumstances, but it was by foreknowledge of God. Yes, Lord. Get his plan into action. Um, before, again, that Adam was formed before the earth, before he hung the stars, before he spoke anything into existence, you and me were on his mind. Oh, yes. The righteousness oh, of God demands perfection. Oh, That's why abortion, Pastor, is so horrible. Amen. Oh. It is. The and that I knew you in the room, so Yep. He knows the person, he knows the heart of the man. That's why abortion is so horrible. Well, because God already knew those individuals and they've been murdered. Right. Yeah. They've been murdered. But you see, the, the righteousness of God demands perfection. And you and me are not perfect. We cannot be perfect upon this globe. No, sir. But the one who redeemed us is perfect. Yeah, amen. And always, in all ways, at all yeah. times has been perfect. And therefore, the perfect substitution for you and me. Thank you. Um, Psalm 45 and 6. Psalm 45 and 6. And it is... It is difficult for us to wrap our mind around the sacrifice that he made. And I mentioned this a few weeks ago. The beatings, the scourging, the crown of thorns. But that was little compared to what he felt from heaven. Amen. Because he repeats the prophecy that is found in Psalms. My God, my God, why? Hast thou forsaken me? Yeah. yeah. Because the greatest injury done to Messiah on the cross was not spikes, was not spear, was not bleeding, was none of that. What did he cry out about? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because of sin because sin was upon him. 
sin was laid in the vengeance, the hatred of sin from heaven was all laid on him. Every bit of it. Yes. From the moment that Adam sinned, Eve sinned, every sin in between, every sin through the time that he spent on earth, and every sin that has happened since and that will happen. God poured out his hatred. Yes. We think God is just an all-loving God and he is full of love, but he hates, I said he despises sin. Yes. Any unrighteousness, he despises it, he hates it. And if it were not for God the Messiah, to have taken all of this, we would be on our way to hell today. Yes. We would be there. Absolutely. And it was because he took all of that. So it's not just the stripes. It's not just the death. But he was willing to take the hatred. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? because of sin because of sin let's go to Psalm 45 and 6 45 and 6 thy throne O God is forever and ever the scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter or a righteous scepter his kingdom is forever and ever it always has been it always will be it's not based upon our time then in Psalm 93, verse 2, Psalm 93 and 2, and I apologize for getting emotional. I apologize, uh, but I cannot help. I cannot help myself when I think of what Christ did for me. Amen. What he did for me when he substituted because I should have died that death. Amen. I am worthy of it. Our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, he was emotional when he went into the uh, uh, temple and he overturned the tables. Amen. He had emotions. They were godly emotions. Amen. Just like we are, he is our example. But when he cried out to his father, he cried out in passion. That's why it's called Amen. the Amen. Christ. He had passion. He did. And when we have loved ones or we have ones that we're praying for and we're standing Pray with for, passion. We care for them. We are praying for them with passion. Amen. One time Stevie, you know, he's a child, he twelve years old, he'll say like, You and dad are so excited. Why are you so excited? Amen. But if he was there in Jesus' day, and he could only Ooh. see our Lord in the temple. Our Lord didn't just sit back. No. You know, and there were things that our Lord had to do too. There were customs of the times, the, the way that he was dressed. Amen. Even later on in his evangelism, there were garments that were made for him by women that sewed garments. And that was Amen. a group that we had when we were younger in one of the churches. Women were of Purple. Women yeah. of Purple. Amen. They were women that worked in the church. Uh, we had maybe 20, 25 women, and they were the Women of Purple. That was a prayer group. But you're Amen. talking about a passion-filled life. We're not called to just be sedentary and be no. so back to where we don't do anything for the Lord. Amen. Psalm 93, 2. Amen. Psalm 93, 2, and the Bible says, Thy throne is established of old. Thou art from everlasting. Yes. Now see, Thank you, Lord. You, you might be asking the question, why did I read these last two verses? How does that connect to what we've been reading? The answer is that He, our Messiah, left His almighty throne in heaven yes. to come to rescue you and me. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. I cannot imagine leaving that station. He did, though. But he Could did. I say, I say something, Pastor? Yeah, please do. Uh, 
I know we left this scripture a long time ago, but when you were over in Isaiah 53 and verse 5, it was, uh, we were talking about it being past tense because like it already happened. But the one phrase there I always thought was neat because in verse 5 it says, and with his stripes we are. We here. are. So that brought that yeah. up. Right. It is not past tense. That's present. Now. Right now. As, mm -hmm. as, as present yeah. tense in Isaiah's time, as present tense yeah. in our time. I like that when Peter referred to it by his stripes, we were. Yes. He went past then. Past. Because when it happened. Praise God. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, but our what's, Amen. Now. what's beautiful is, is Praise that the crucifixion is past tense. In other words, it's already done. What he's going to go through is done. Yet his healing for our souls, for our bodies, for our minds is always present tense. Right now. Praise God. But see, he... He is so, <laughs> so loving. Thank you, Lord. What it took to leave his throne in glory, glory to rescue us, to bring pardon for our souls by paying the price of sin, which yeah. belonged to us alone. He took it yes. to himself. The wrath of Jehovah, God's hatred of sin, was poured out on Christ that day in those hours at Calvary. Yes. Our Lord and Savior received the death penalty. Yes. Do us. Mm -hmm. That was do us. Yes. The Godhead had never had contact with sin. No first-hand account. Messiah had never had to deal with temptation um, because the Holy Trinity despised sin. They have a hatred of it, of unrighteousness, of finding... But Lucifer got kicked out of there. Amen. They, uh, they hate uh, anything that is less than godly, that is truly, fully, completely a stench in the nostrils of God that is not holy. If it's unrighteous, it stinks. Righteousness smells good to him. Sin, it stinks. Yet, for us, Amen. Yet this holy God came to Amen. earth, fully God, fully man, and lived a perfect life without a single misstep, no slip-ups. And no days spent out of sorts. Um, as fully God, it was His holy, and this is what I love, it was His holy predetermination to live for us. Thank you, Lord. To die for us that we might vicariously, and now I don't think that's talked about enough, vicariously share in His triumphs. See, yes. Victory in Jesus, it's vicarious. We get to have it because He did it. And yes. he, is, he offers it to us. He shares it with us. Not because we've earned it. Not because we deserve it. That's for sure. We don't deserve it. Not a one of us deserves it. But He shares His triumphs. Thereby being causing us to be saved from the wrath which he endured. Yes. And that we also could then take part in his resurrection and live with him eternally. That's Amen. the real payoff. Amen. Amen. He bore our shame, not, not just our sins, but the shame. Yes. I can't. I can't even imagine, I know the shame that I have of my own sin, and I know that you're, you understand the shame that you have of your own sin, but can you even begin to contemplate the shame of all sin, all ages, for all people, all on your shoulders, and again,
we look at the passion and if you've watched the passion uh, or any movie relating the passion of the Christ it deals with the physicality of it and we cry a tear over that of how mistreated he was but that's such a small part of the passion of the Christ the right. passion of Messiah the anointed one so small right. he did it all so that we could share in his glory he took our stripes so that our sinful ways could be healed that our bodies could be healed our minds could be renewed thank you Jesus this is why he went to our cross not his cross my cross he went to your cross Rick he went to your cross Chris he went to your cross Margaret he went to your cross Stephen he went to your cross Patrick he went to your cross and whoever you are that's listening today he went to your cross Amen. and he took our true guilt and death intended for us that we might live with him oh what a savior oh hallelujah marvelous now it's our turn to die to be crucified to die to ourselves and live for christ i want us to read in galatians 2 20. see now there's a requirement for this salvation oh no works can't earn salvation but there are things that God expects from us they are results of salvation this holiness and this sacrifice are the results not works of but results of Galatians 2 20 Galatians 2 20 it says I am crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Did you notice what he said there? I live by the faith of the Son of God. Not I live by my faith, See, our faith would be way too weak. Our trust is too weak. It's too feeble. It is His faith. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Praise God. Oh, Amen. I go back over it. It's, it's all Him. I mean, He does... <laughs> We're like a baby. We're just like a baby. We don't have any ability to take care of ourselves. If we didn't have him to fend for us, to protect us, to care for us, to build us up by the Holy Ghost, to prepare us and to present us, we'd be lost. But praise God, he paid all of that price. You say, well, that's a, it is a mighty high price. But he paid for it all the way back before the foundation of the world because when he said it, it was done. Because see, what God says, it's done. What God purposes in his heart, it is done. It's finished. When Jesus said it, he wasn't just speaking. He said, it is finished. What we had decided in all eternity past, it is now finished in reality on this earth. It's done. It's completed. The course is done. And now I build my church. Praise I do God. it by the faith of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Uh, yes. Romans 1, 16 and 17. I know I'm running a little bit long. Stick with me for just another minute or two. Romans 1, 16 and 17. 
Amen. Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For yes. therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Yes. Oh, what a powerful yes. set of verses. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but friends, there are multitudes of people that are caught up in churches and they are ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How can they live by faith to faith if they are ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? How can they have the power that is needed in their lives, the power of the Holy Ghost, if they are ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? They will not proclaim it openly. They're ashamed to admit that they're a Christian. They won't admit that they are an old-fashioned Christian. They don't want to say that. They don't want to say that uh, they're part of uh, that old-time religion. What everybody used to sing, give me that old time religion. The Presbyterians, the Baptists, the Methodists, the, uh, the Pentecostals, everybody was singing that. Yeah. Give me that old time religion. Amen. Not so now. Not so now. But see, this is what it means to be alive. To be in service you, Lord. to our Lord. He paid our debt, Amen. which we could not pay, cannot pay, and now our allegiance, all our strength, all our heart, all our mind must be at His disposal. Yes. Must be ready for His call. This redeemed life, our new behavior, our new thoughts, our new desires, are our reasonable, logical service to Christ Jesus, Amen. whom we Amen. owe everything. 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 Thank you, Lord. Everything. And it has to come, that allegiance has to come before everything else. Thank it you. has to come, I'm, you know, this might bother some people. It's got to come before family, it's got to come before wife, before husband, before children, because if we don't put Him first, and his gospel first, then it won't matter if we are uh, saying that we are a Christian to our family. Because if we are selecting and preferring them above Christ, Jesus didn't do it. He refused to do it. He was in the house preaching and his mother came and said, tell him, tell my son that his mother and his brethren and his sisters are outside. And he said, who is my mother, who are my brothers, who are my sisters? Basically, wait, Mom, because I'm not done preaching. I'm not done speaking the words of heaven. Amen. And we have got to put him first above everything else in life. Praise God. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Romans 12, 1 and 2 is where we will read. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And the Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God. Not holy as in complete, holy, H-O-L-Y. Holy, acceptable unto God which is your reasonable or your logical service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank yes. you, Jesus. Thank you. That is our Savior. Thank That's you. why he did it. That's why he came. He did not come to just get us saved, but he came to add us to the band. 
He came to add us to his army. He is the captain of our salvation, the yes. captain that leads us into war against the enemy. And Amen. that is what he has done, and that is whom we serve. And that is why the Bible tells us to contemplate this salvation. That we need to make sure that we are ready to make the sacrifices. Otherwise, we're going to get in just a little bit and we're going to be one of those that the seed was tossed upon the ground and the wind came and blew it away. And then there's that that has very little root and dries up. Then there is that that the cares of the world come and choke it off and then finally that last fourth that last segment it takes hold and there's joy not just for a little while but there's joy unspeakable and full of glory and that has to be us because of what he did for us what he did for me because again that tree was meant for me that tree was meant for you Man. and he took it and all of the hatred and this is people I don't believe they still understand that every sinner that dies is receiving the hatred and the vengeance of God upon their souls eternally eternal separation and torment because they would not repent because they would not confess repent and turn from their evil ways turn from their sin put their back to it and go ahead in righteousness and God's vengeance will be satisfied it will be satisfied because he hates he hates sin thank you Jesus any any prayer request before we go today anything spoken or unspoken 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 it's unspoken unspoken praise god okay let's go to the lord in prayer and if you're listening to this later just add your request to this list and know that as god already provided the sacrifice for our sin before the foundations of the world, so too he has the answer to your prayer. He's already provided a way. Amen. Father, we come before you and we ask in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, he is our Lord, our Savior. We ask that these needs unspoken though they may be yet you know them unheard by other ears yet you know them and have known them before we even knew we had the need you were aware of them and Lord we thank you for meeting our need by your mighty providential hand God by your power by your mercy by your grace we thank you for speaking to these needs. We turn them over to you and we rely upon you and your perfect plan for our lives. We thank you for it. We give you honor and glory for your miracle working power and what you've already done in our lives. We don't deserve anything else. You've already done so much, but we thank you for what you've promised that you would hear our prayers. We thank you, Father. Father of all lights, all glory. You alone are worthy to be praised. And we do that this day. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you Lord. for joining us today. It's been, a, it's been wonderful, a joy to see you all, to uh, be able to minister. Praise God and God bless you. We love you. Love you. Love you all. Bye. Love you. God bless. Bye -bye. Enjoy this beautiful day. Goodbye. God bless.